Hey guys, uh, Mr. Larson here. I'm going to talk about 6.1 with you guys. Uh, this is part two where we talk about what we call the ambiguous case. Um, if you remember, we learned during our original notes with uh, law signs that you can use this for those shortcuts, those congruency shortcuts for triangles when you have um, angle, side, angle. You can use law of signs. Uh, angle, angle, side. You can use law of signs. And I think those are the only two, right? We talked about side, angle, side, and side, 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 but we're going to learn the law of cosines, which is used for those um, uh, during your next, next note session. So um, <clears throat> today, the ambiguous case is angle, side, side. Of course, we don't like to say that, right? Angle, side, side. So a lot of times we'll write this as side, side, angle. I'm probably going to be writing ass a lot on these notes. So don't tell your parents. Okay, um, so go ahead and uh, do these warm ups and you can go ahead and pause it and, and try those and I'll show the, the answers and talk about the last one for a second. All right, so go ahead and check your answers. Um, I want to talk about this third one on the bottom left where it says solve for all possible values of x, sine of x is 0.532. Uh, we have two answers here, so just a quick refresher. Your calculator is going to give you um, this first quadrant angle when you do inverse sine and then you want it so that would be your first answer and then use that same reference angle in quadrant two because that's the other quadrant where sine is positive and then of course we subtract from 180 and that's how we get these two answers here okay so um, calculator is only smart enough to give you one you need to remember that there's actually a second angle sketch and uh, you can find it that way Okay, so to explore this uh, this angle side side scenario, we're going to take a look at uh, this link here, and you should have some time in class uh, if you're live to go through that. But um, here's kind of what we're looking at. So this looks a little strange, but um, angle side side means I know an angle and then two sides, and the angle cannot be the included angle, right? Because then it would be side angle side. So the angle is the 30 degrees on the bottom left. This blue side is my first side that I know. And then this A equals three is the second side that I know. So that's my angle side side, the 30 degrees, the length of nine and the length of three. So there's the reason it's called the ambiguous case is we don't really know what's going on. There can be a couple different things going on. Uh, I know this can be distracting that that's moving. Okay. Uh, the reason that's moving and I'll, I'll play that again in a second is I don't exactly know what angle this third side is going to drop at, right? Because I don't know anything about angle C. The only angle I know is angle A. Um, but I know that this bottom side on the dotted line is going to be a third side of my triangle. I just don't know how that side is going to connect with this hanging side A that's equal to three right now. So let's take a look. Uh, I think we can agree that it doesn't matter how I swing this side A right now. If it's a length of three in this scenario, it's not even going to connect to this bottom side. So it's too short and it's not actually going to form any triangles. So one scenario when you have angle side side is that you may not even have a triangle if that that second side is too short. So what we can do with this slider up here is just I'll use my left and right arrows. Uh, we can extend this side A and you can see that we are getting closer and closer to that hitting the dotted line down there. And eventually, when I get to a length of 4.5 on this example, it'll be different depending on what the, the information is on your particular problem you're working on. But on this one, once I get to 4.5, that side A is just long enough to form a right triangle. Okay, so that's that's one scenario. You could have uh, one triangle and it would be a right triangle. Okay, uh, once I extend this past 4.5, which is the height of my triangle, we can see that I can swing this either to the right or to the left. To the right, meaning it would hit at B2. To the left, meaning it would hit at B1. And I don't know where that side A is going to land, but I have two potential triangles, right? Without knowing any other information other than the 30 degrees, the length of 9, and the length of 4.6, this could either be triangle 1 or triangle 2. As I continue to extend, we see how that modifies. It's still two different triangles that I see. The point's either going to land at B1 or B2. And as A approaches the length of B, meaning as A approaches 9, we can see what's going to happen, right? 
eventually let me stop uh okay uh when a is equal to nine the only possibility is that it swings all the way out to the right ignore this black side that was swinging the only possibility is that it swings all the way out to the right and lands at b2 because if it landed at b1 it would land on top of a and i would have two points on top of each other in a triangle that wouldn't work out right so once we're equal to nine i only have one triangle and let's see what happens as it goes beyond nine As I get bigger and bigger, it has to, like here it's 9.9. .9. Um, when that's the scenario, it can only swing out to the right and land at B2. If it swings out to the left, you can see very faintly it's going to land outside of the triangle on the left side. Okay, so um, we have, I'll go the opposite way with this now. I'll shrink the length of A. And you guys can play around with this. Hopefully you, you kind of get a feel for it. Uh, right now, I only have one triangle where it's going to land at B2. As I shrink it, now it's it's two potential triangles. We can see I could land at B1 or at B2. As I get smaller and smaller, again, it's two potential triangles we're talking about. Eventually, I get back to just one triangle, and then this would be no triangles. So this is a tricky lesson. This is one of the trickier ones that you're going to see, but I'm going to go through each of the three scenarios. Uh, but I'm going to go through each of the three scenarios with you on our notes. Okay, luckily for us, we can use law of signs for this. Um, so it's it's kind of review the skills that we need. We already have. We learned them last time. So uh, you can see this here. I have these asterisks. Okay, when we're presented with angle side side, okay, we need to do some work to determine if we can form one triangle two triangles or zero triangles. The process I outline, I would highly recommend that you guys do every time you have one of these scenarios. Um, and it starts with sketching a picture. So uh, for example, one, spoiler alert, this will be zero triangles. Okay, so let's sketch um, triangle ABC. I always draw my triangles the same way. They're, they're very rarely gonna be accurate with what it would really look like, but that's okay. So, Measure of angle A is 30 degrees. Side A is equal to 2. Side B is equal to 6. Right away, I can see, oh, this is angle, side, side, right? Angle, side, side. So I'm going to note that this is angle, side, side. And I'm going to sketch two triangles because there's always a possibility that I'm going to need two. So let's go ahead and sketch a second one. That was a really bad sketch. That's okay. A, B, C. Same information is going to hold true. Uh, actually, I'm going to call this A prime, B prime, C prime, meaning it's actually a different triangle. And we'll label the same pieces. Okay. So in order to use the law of sines if you don't remember like oh i can use it for angle side angle or angle angle side or angle side side just remember you have to know three pieces of information and two of them need to be opposite of each other this does satisfy that so i can go ahead and set up my law of sines equation so sine of 30 degrees over two equals and then i have to do over six and this would be the sine of b um, if I multiply by 6, I get the sine of B is equal to 6 times the sine of 30 over 2. Taking the inverse sine, I should get B is equal to inverse sine of that fraction. So 6 sine of 30 over 2. Get my calculator out. Please make sure that you are in degree mode, which I already switched. So let's see, 6 sine of 30, close that parenthesis, divide by 2. So this is my sine value. I need to do the inverse sine of that. That's giving me an error. 
when you get an error like this, that means that there is no triangle. Okay, so that's a pretty easy way to tell. Um, by the way, we should have known that already. This 1.5 is a sign value. The biggest sign value you're ever going to have is 1. So if it's beyond that, if it's 1.5, you know it's going to give you an error. So this would be uh, no triangles. This is the easiest. I don't need this one. I don't need that one. That's the easiest one to do, right? It takes the least amount of time. Okay, spoiler alert, this one will be one triangle. But um, before we know that, like if you were solving this initially, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that. So let's sketch ABC, 30 degrees, 8, and 6. Um, I noticed right away, oh, this is angle side side. So I'm going to sketch a second triangle in case I need it. Sometimes you will. We'll call it A prime, B prime, C prime. And let's see, I do have the necessary info. I have side <clears throat> and angle that are opposite. Sine of 30 degrees over eight equals sine of B over six. Multiply both sides by six. And then inverse sine both sides. Six times sine of 30 over eight. So I'm gonna do inverse sine from the very beginning. Some of you guys might wanna do the fraction first and then do inverse sine of the answer, but we don't need to, we can do it this way. Just be careful with parentheses. And we get 22.02, so that's good. So I know that um, angle B equals 22.02 degrees. Okay. All right. So I'm going to sketch that in here. Now, anytime you do inverse sine, just like our warm up, we know there's really two angles. So there's a quadrant one angle, which in this instance is 22.02 degrees. There's also a quadrant two angle. Well, this reference angle here is 22.02 degrees. The reference angle over here is going to be 22.02 degrees. This is 180. So when I subtract 180 minus my reference angle, I get 157.98. 157.98. So this is angle B. This other one, that's a 157, is B prime. So B prime down here, I didn't mark this in, let's see, six, eight, B prime is going to be 157.98. Okay, so let's keep solving. Now I'm going to solve both triangles. Okay, so when I solve the first one, I can subtract from 180, and I think we're going to get um, angle C equals 137.98. Oops, I'm sorry. I think it was 127.98. And then I can lastly, so this is 127.98. Then we can do law of sines again, and I can do sine of 30 degrees. I'm trying to find side C right now. And we are going to get C. I won't show all the work on that. C is going to equal 12.61. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so now the question is, what about this second triangle, right? I, I plugged in that 157.98. I know the first angle there, A prime, is 30 degrees. Um, so let's solve for C prime. That's the other angle, right? That's, that's an easy one to solve for. So I just add those two angles up and subtract from 180, just like I did in the first triangle. So 30 plus 157. Some of you guys can probably see what's going to happen here, right? I get 187.98. So I haven't even found angle C prime yet, and already I'm over 180. So what does that tell us? That tells us the only way that this will work is if I have a negative angle measure for my third angle, and that's certainly not possible. So um, that angle would have to be negative 7.98 degrees. So this tells us that the second triangle is not possible. Okay, so we know the, the two measurements for angle B. I know that in the first triangle, it's going to be my quadrant one angle of 22.02. In the second triangle, it's going to be the quadrant two angle of 157.98. But that doesn't guarantee that the second one's going to work. You just have to check it and see if you're under 180 with those two. If you are, then, then the second triangle will work out. So this one only has one triangle. Okay. Um, let's go check out example three. This will be one where I have two triangles. So sketch ABC. Remember, I only have to sketch a second triangle if I have angle side side. So you don't have to do this on every law of sines problem. We didn't do it the other day because none of those were angle side side. Okay, so I'm double checking. Okay, this is angle side side. Same scenario, right? So I need two triangles. A prime, B prime, C prime. All the information is the same. Uh, this is really messy. These primes are like apostrophes. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's solve the first one. So again, do I have my three values that I know, two of them which are across from each other? I certainly do. So first step, set up law of sines, sine of 30 over 5, sine of b over 6, multiply by 6 on both sides. And then I'll do inverse sine of that fraction. So b is going to equal inverse sine 6 times sine of 30. Close parenthesis divided by 5, close parenthesis. So I get 36.87. So that's the measure of angle B, 36.87 degrees. Okay, so that's one of my unknowns. 36.87 degrees. Um, again, to find the other angle B, I know that inverse sine is only going to give me this first quadrant angle of 36.87. If you can invent a calculator that'll spit out both answers, you're going to be rich. I don't know how the TI calculators don't do it yet, but again, this has a reference angle in quadrant one of that same value, 36.87. So quadrant two will also have a reference angle of 36.87. So let's see, 180 minus that should get us there, right? By the way, that's always going to be the case, 180 minus that first angle that you get. <clears throat> so 143.13 degrees. So again, here is the value of angle B. And this quadrant 2 is the second triangle's angle B, or in other words, B prime. So 143. 0.13 degrees. Let's solve the first one and then we'll come back and, and finish solving the second one. So let's see, I know two angle measures. I can add those up and subtract from 180, right? 36.87 plus 30. 
180 minus that. 113.13. Here's a reminder to also list these out here. I don't want to have to hunt inside the triangle to find your information. It gets really messy. So the last thing I need is this small c, right? Um, side c. So I'm going to use that red circled, the red circled values again to set up my first proportion. So sine of 30 degrees over 5 equals, now I need my c, big c, little c, right? So one third, oops, that's a common mistake. It should be sine of 113.13 over c. Let's see, cross multiply. That's an S, sine of 113.13 degrees. Divide by sine of 30. So I don't have to do inverse sine on this, which is nice, but. Nine point two zero. Nine point two zero. Okay, so I finished solving the first triangle. <clears throat> you can just verify that the largest angle and largest side are across from each other, same with the smallest angle inside, which they are, so I think that makes sense. Now on to the second triangle. First we want to find C prime which should be easy, right? It should be a gimme. C prime equals, and it should be 180 minus those two values. This is where we found out on the previous example that it didn't work out because I got a negative angle. So minus 30. This might be close, actually. Minus 143.13. So this drawing is off. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your drawing is off, okay? Oops. Just make sure the numbers are correct. Like that angle C prime would be much skinnier. Not a big deal. Um, okay, so now the last thing I need to find is side C prime down here. Ooh, I should write this out. B prime is 143.13. And I think one law of signs will get me there. So I always go with this original information because I know that's accurate for my first proportion. There's no way I made a math error in finding that, right? It was given in the problem. Equals sine of 6.87 degrees over C prime. Cross multiplying. C prime times sine of 30. Equals 5 times sine of 6.87. And let's see, what do we get? This is five times sine, 6.87 divided by sine of 30. So I think that'll make sense. Okay, and I get 1.20, so C prime equals 1.20. So you could write the measure of angle C prime, just so you don't confuse that with side C prime, right? The capital C and lowercase c look the same. So that's it. We're done. So first, find the only angle you can find, which is always going to be, in this instance, angle B. It's going to be a side. It's going to be across from one of the sides that you know. Then subtract 180 minus that to find that corresponding value in your second triangle 
and then solve both triangles with the law of sines. Nice thing is that you'll only ever have to do a maximum of two law of sines calculations per triangle because that third angle you can always just subtract from 180. So, all right, guys, I hope that helps and uh, let's get some practice done. Thanks.